The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN, 906 AM. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and talk about a two-way market, folks. We pick up right where we left off yesterday. We've basically clawed back all of the gains that we had on Wednesday. You trade up to 47.43 in the S&Ps, and just like that, folks, we are 120 points off of the highs we had about 26 hours ago. We're coming right down to the level that we were at, talking about 2 p.m. on Wednesday. Uh, when the Federal Reserve had their announcement in the press conference that followed. Boy, big day of negative action yesterday after the markets accelerated Wednesday as the market somewhat recalibrates to the fact that, yes, rates are going up, folks, and growth stocks especially not liking that. You jump over to the NASDAQ 100. Man, I was talking about it even during my show yesterday, right? Let's zoom in on just even yesterday's action on the NASDAQ 100. You kick things off at 9.30. Uh, I kick off the program at 9 o'clock. Folks, at that time, we were 640 points above where we're trading at right now. You're talking about 24 hours ago. And as you can see, the slide actually was pretty accelerated throughout the entire day. I mean, when I got off the air, these are five-minute bars we're looking at. So the close of the 955 bar, which is the one we're looking at right now, now they started to accelerate in the last 10 minutes, right? At 950. At 9.50 in the morning yesterday, you're trading at 16,278. That's barely a negative day. So things really picked up. Just remarkable where we've been from since then. You look at where we are. We're just off the lows we made. Uh, no, that's not the action. Excuse me. Uh, you look at where we are in the NASDAQ 100. You're just off the lows that we made. Uh, lows at 4 a.m., lows at about 8 a.m. Back things up compared to the lows that we had Yesterday, you were down to about 15,800. You're about 100 points below that low, actually below right now where we were Wednesday or Tuesday in the NASDAQ 100. The lows of Tuesday, you're talking about right where we are right now. The Dow off 188 points. So look at the divergence here, right? The Dow does not give it all back. We're a solid 300 plus points above where we were Wednesday and Tuesday. NASDAQ 100 negative below that level and the S&P is just above that level taking a look at the Russell right at Wednesday's action the Russell man talk about some volatility almost 100 points to the upside 100 points to the downside volatility in spades Bitcoin really remarkable the Bitcoin's trading with the market at this point uh, it is an asset class just like the, the market it's down 2.7 percent today with the market accelerates higher Wednesday trades lower Thursday continues the lower run on Friday crude oil down a buck 11 crude somewhat trading with the market as well you trade higher wednesday a uh, little bit of a divergence on thursday but we've pulled back now uh about two bucks from where you were on yesterday's action on crude gold though continuing to run check out that running gold 1753 on wednesday you're up above 1800 you reach 1815 this morning on gold you're back to 1809 right now silver's up six cents at 2255 we jumped to notes and bonds you're talking about higher price and lower yield how does that make sense coming off the fed meeting right lots going on though in terms of where the market is what is happening over there you jump to bonds we're talking about a yield now under 1.4 percent under 1.4 percent taking a look at the weekly on this chart i got a lot of fibonacci numbers i got a lot i'm going to remove these drawings move this one as well uh i'm going to back things up even a little bit further to see where this fibonacci line lines up yeah so that is from the covid lows no, excuse me, not the COVID lows. That is from uh, October 8th to the COVID highs. Low yields, of course, during COVID. Uh, we've pulled back about to that 50% line, chopping around a bit. Now putting this back, back on a daily. You can see quite a pop off of those lows that we had there. I mean, you're back to where we were September 28th on the 10-year. Not what many people expected back then when the talk was that the Fed would be raising rates yields will be going up we are back under 1.4 percent uh whether that's the omicron variant whether that's just uh 
potentially some weak growth going up there as we have rates rising, uh, hurting some of the growth prospects for some of the tech stocks out there. Let's jump around to some of those tech stocks. We'll start it off with Amazon. Amazon yesterday trades down, putting it back on a 15-minute. All these stocks had some pretty magnificent moves. Wednesday, you trade up almost 200 bucks. Yesterday, you're trading down $100. You're almost back to where we were in the lows yesterday. And Amazon, Microsoft just has been bananas, the moves this stock has had. Wednesday, you trade from 325 to 337 And just like that, we give up 15 bucks on the price of Microsoft from where we were yesterday morning. You're going to open down more than $2 to the negative on Microsoft. Some of these tech stocks, man. Watch out. Apple, right? Apple, okay, in the last 24 hours... I always talk about it, but y y it's it's amazing. Uh, Apple in the last 24 hours so close, so close to three trillion dollars, right? It was, I mean, it almost seems like poetic justice somehow that if this market's going to top out, not poetic justice, maybe well, not poetic justice, maybe just irony uh, that Apple would ring the three trillion dollar mark before we finally get a retracement in this market. Didn't quite ring it, but got about as close as you can get. 182 and change. The three trillion dollar mark is 182.86 or 182.84 or something like that. Now, Apple, you're talking about giving up 13 dollars. Is that right? Well, we'll call it 170. We're trading at right now. We'll call it 12 dollars. Giving up 12 dollars from where we were, even 11 dollars from where we were yesterday. That's 170 billion dollars in market cap, folks. There are not many companies that are worth 200 billion dollars. Apple gives up that type of value. That is the type of value, though, that gets destroyed in people's accounts, just like it gets created on the way up, it is real, okay? That is values that are sitting in people's accounts, whether it's retirement accounts, investment accounts across the board. Uh, this morning versus yesterday morning, you're talking about $174 billion less value sitting in an account just in the last 24 hours, just in the stock of Apple. It's just mind-blowing, folks. The numbers are almost incomprehensible to the human mind because they're so large. When you talk about a $16.5 billion share base, excuse me, $16.4 billion share base, and you talk about a company, $160 billion, I mean, what is even in that? Billions, a thousand million, so you got $160,000 million lost. Anyway, those are the gymnastics I do in my head sometimes to try and understand the value, but pay attention to it. Because, yes, it looks like a, a slight pullback, but, man, you got a lot of value that got created on the way up. And even just a, a normal retracement, folks, of a Fibonacci retracement, just in the run that Apple has had going back to the last two months, you're still talking about this thing can trade down four or five more bucks, and you're only at a 382 of the entire move we had just up. You traded from a price point of 138 to 182. You're talking about $44. You're talking about a 30% rise in the biggest company in the world over that time. You better believe pullbacks are possible, folks, and we may be seeing one right now as we come into a Fed tightening cycle. Uh, doesn't mean that the market won't be okay, folks, but volatility for potentially the next six months, year, something like that, it is very possible that we get a consolidation with the two-way market. You're seeing it today. Uh, I came on yesterday. I was talking to our man, Kevin Hanks. We talked to him Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So unfortunately, we don't get a chance to talk to him today. We'll talk to him next Tuesday. Uh, but I was saying, man, I was wrong, Kevin. I said I did not imagine that this market had a 140-point acceleration to the upside in it coming off of a Fed meeting that they would be hiking. And I was wrong because it wasn't a quick move. It was a two-day move. I don't know why it took two days to figure it out, but it did, folks. Negative action. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pes Evento on stocks you need to pay attention to, and you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. It is interesting. We got options expiration going on coming into Friday, coming into the last full week of trading before Christmas. Close next Friday for December 24th, Christmas Eve, in order of Saturday, Christmas Day. When you come into New Year's, uh, no market holiday, actually, for New Year's. I think that's the way it unfolds only on when New Year's day falls on a Saturday. Uh, so we'll be open, I think, a full market on Friday. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Christmas, uh, excuse me, New Year's Eve. Not a lot of action in the market beyond the fact that uh, a lot of things do get done for tax purposes, uh, as that's probably why the market decides to keep things open on Christmas Eve, where a lot of that does matter. People getting in trades for tax purposes on the final day. All right. It's going to be an interesting open, folks. We got 11 minutes jumping over to the VIX right now. VIX. Talk about catching a bid. We're almost right back up to the highs we had on Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, with this type of action over the last couple of days, right, does it make sense that we stop at these lows you're talking about? S&Ps, you're within about 25 points of those lows. Made it below 4,600 on Tuesday, just below that, just above that level, excuse me, on Wednesday. You're trading at 4,627, but man, this thing has not found a bid since the open of trading yesterday uh, when things started accelerating on downward action. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's jump around to some of the Forex markets as we wait for that market because, man, we've had some moves. And that's been some of the action in a big way. I mean, you check out, uh, let's just jump around. The Australian dollar, you're up to 72 cents. You're back to 71 right now. The euro, with some volatility Wednesday into Thursday. What's so interesting here is that you had the ECB, the Bank of England, and the R Fed coming out between Tuesday, excuse me, Wednesday and Thursday. We were on Wednesday, Bank of England and the ECB was on Thursday. Pound US dollar spikes to 133.73, just like that. We've almost given up a full basis point to 132.91 on the pound. Let's check out the yen. That's what I wanted to get to. Uh, yen gives it back from 114.25, taking a look at it on the daily. A little bit of a pullback, um, but man, nothing too dramatic considering the run we've had since September up to 115.51. That's part of the reason, though, you're seeing acceleration in gold in that contract. You pull up the gold contract. Gold catching a spike as you've seen that action. Gold up to 1807. All right, let me set this back to the markets before we jump around.
So we'll kick things off with Omicron. I was talking to my dad earlier this morning, and he had mentioned this, talking about, uh, you know, cases spiking. It is interesting that you have the, the acceleration in Europe. Now you're seeing the acceleration here in the U.S. Promising news, though, out of South Africa, that hospitalization rate plunges in Omicron wave. Cases remain high compared with the previous COVID waves. Uh, infections may have peaked in the epicenter already. <coughs> and you're getting some po positive news uh, out of that variant reporting a much lower rate of hospital admissions and signs that the wave of infections may be peaking. Um, only 1.7% of identified cases were admitted to the hospital in the second week of infections compared with 19% in the same week of the third Delta driven wave. Quite a discrepancy there. Hopefully this is the case that's much more mild even as it's spreading. Uh, health officials presented evidence that the strain may be milder and that infections may already be peaking in the country's most popular populous province. Gauteng maybe? Uh, still, the new cases in that week of the current wave were more than 20,000 a day compared with 4,400 in the same week in the third wave. So it's going to be different. There's going to be more cases here. They're going to be milder. That's the estimate out there. It's going to be interesting to see how this classification works. Uh, I can tell you already, though, that it's going to be interesting to see how it hits the economy. I'll tell you my situation. So at home, of course, we have my young son, Tommy the fourth, who's going to be 11 months old, uh, coming up uh, early in the new year. Uh, but I also have my fiance has a young son who's in pre-K. He's almost five years old. Yesterday, for the first time in his class, you have a positive case. So unfortunately, uh, you know, the way it works here in Florida, it does vary that if you sign something saying they don't have symptoms, you can't send them back. Today is the last day before Christmas vacation anyway, so we're just going to keep him home, maybe to keep him out of that class. If there's other people, we're going to watch him over the next two or three days or that or thereabouts to see um, how he is. We're vaccinated. I'm not too worried with the baby. We just, just want to be careful um, out there. But I'll tell you, I was thinking about this morning that I'm in a very fortunate situation where I already have my mom helping out taking care of Tommy. My fiance works, she's a respiratory therapist. Uh, so it's a unique situation that I'm able to stay home. Son can stay home. He can stay out of school for a period of time just uh, as the last day to be careful. Many people, point being folks, many people in that same situation, they either send their kid back to school, which is understandable if they don't have symptoms, uh, or they stay home and it affects their work. It affects the economy. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how this impacts the economy because heed that warning that it's going to happen more often. Uh, you're seeing it play out in professional sports right now. They're not sure what to do. Originally, when the cases were very severe, uh, they have protocols in place, whether they're out seven days, 10 days, vaccinated, unvaccinated, it varies. But now you're seeing a substantial rise in the level of cases. Maybe they're asymptomatic. The NFL and the NBA trying to figure out maybe they pause things for a week, even they're talking about, because you may see many cases rip through the league. Maybe they're not as severe. Maybe the players are mostly asymptomatic. That'll kick them out of the games. In the NFL, you're coming into the home stretch. That might uh, ruin the integrity of the game. So you're going to have a lot of players potentially exposed here if cases spike, like it looks like they're going to, unfortunately, folks. Uh, the kids, the school deal, though, getting potentially... Uh, exposed. Now, our son isn't five yet, so he doesn't have the opportunity to get vaccinated. Uh, hopefully that stretches down the line sometime in the next year. But yeah, that's a real deal. So hopefully, I mean, good news on the forefront that people aren't getting that sick. That's the bottom line. But from a market perspective, I'm telling you, this is the first time we, we got calls. So for some context here, kids go back to school in late August in Florida, much different than the Northeast, where they kick things off after September. Uh, they go back like August 21st, school begins here. Uh, if you recall, that was kind of right in the middle of our wave, right? So we send son back to pre-K. I'm getting calls every single day from this elementary school, which goes up through sixth grade, that there are cases in the school. And the way it works is you get an automated call, cases in the school. It says you'll get a second automated call as a follow-up if your child has been exposed, which basically means if they're in the classroom that they're in. We never got a second call throughout that entire wave. We never got a second call, even though I was getting calls every single day 
I was like, man, this is intense. It's only a matter of time, right? Thankfully, things calmed down. We never got the second call. What happens? Yesterday, we got the second call. Um, so anecdotally, I know it's anecdotally, but it seems like the cases are going to rise. And uh, I wonder if that's going to hit the economy at this time as well, because if you have kids, maybe you don't want to send them back. Maybe they do have symptoms, stuff like that. Boy, kids in school affecting people in work. It's a big one. I'm very fortunate to be in the situation I am, that it doesn't impact my work, but many people are not. And I imagine that's going to become a bigger impact across the board as we move forward. And uh, we'll see how the market digests it. Right now, market digesting a little bit of losses. We're coming into the open, down 30 points. You got gold up 10 bucks right now. NASDAQ 100, those tech stocks, we'll see how they open. Apple, the big dog. Boy, Apple's got about $12 to make up for that $3 trillion mark now. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back for the opening bell. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have markets open. S&P is negative by 32 points right now. NASDAQ 100 negative by 152. The Dow off 215. We got the Russell off by eight points right now. Crude off a dollar on the open, above $71, though, 71.12. And we jumped to gold. Gold up nine bucks right now at 18.07. We jumped to notes and bonds. Right now, I think we're probably sitting right at about a yield of one point. Yeah, 1.394. So right at about 1.4%, just under 1.4%. 
percent though sitting at 131.08 positive by five ticks on that 10 year you got the 30 year right now up 18 ticks at 162.22 we jump around to some of the stocks that are moving this morning on options expiration uh adobe trades down dramatically yesterday and you're giving back a percent right now today again at 560 we jump over to apple Apple opening up down nine tenths percent, down a buck thirty seven. We jump over to Microsoft shares, down one point three percent. Google shares down one point two percent. We jump to Tesla shares, down a percent as well. Uh, where is this market going to find a bid, folks? We will find out. All right, jumping around to what else we have going on. Darden Restaurants, they are out with their numbers, I believe. Darden, and they got their CEO is announcing plans to retire. Parent raises forecast despite planned wage hike. Uh, Darden. What are they? DRI is their symbol. Down about 4.3% on their numbers. Yeah, numbers along with that announcement. Conference call beginning at 8.30 Eastern time. You're down about 4.3%. This stock has been a rocket. Um, yeah, not quite, I guess, a rocket. I was thinking, what was I thinking of then? Maybe this recent acceleration. There's Darden. We go back a three-year weekly. Yeah, I guess I was thinking for the run that it had from 26 bucks up to 140 but this thing's been chopping around at 140 for the better part of almost nine months now since March. And they they have had it together pretty well. Uh, Olive Garden, uh, what else they have in there? Seasons 52. If you have a Seasons 52 next year, folks, nearby, check it out. Beautiful restaurant. Uh, they do, like, healthy food uh, with fine dining and wine and all that stuff. It's a pretty great concept i think okay what else do we have going on yeah buy now pay later this one's interesting and uh a firm after all of these stocks have been on a tear recently now let's see how paypal is trading right now paypal's down two percent i mean the market's down almost one percent right now uh, was down yesterday, but this has to do with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau seeking information from a firm. Afterpay will pull up a firm as well. PayPal and Zip on the risks and benefits of their products. But I now pay later services let shoppers defer payment for items, typically over a period of monthly installments and with no interest attached. Uh, a firm shares closed down 11% Thursday, and uh, the other ones were down as well. What is a firm? A. FRM. Yeah, there you go. So down about 2% today with the market, but real acceleration yesterday. And I think I think regulators should, folks. Um, that's the reason why you have some regulations. You know, yes, you could make the argument that jobs will be created in these companies, so you'd be crushing jobs through regulations. But boy, these companies, man, you're going to be preying on people that can't afford things. I mean, I saw an advertisement, I believe, for an Affirm product, and it had to do with Domino's, and I think it was overseas, all right, and it turned into like almost a Twitter meme, um, but it was paying for Domino's pizza over three installments. If you start financing pizza delivery for dinner, folks, we're all in big trouble, because that is not a society we want to live in uh, in any way. It's the same thing as payday loans. Now, payday loans, um, people in the lowest incomes do need bridge capital to just pay their bills occasionally, so there's that argument. But there's no reason the percentages need to be as bad as they are on payday loans. That is something that is just horrible, how the poorest of the poor are exploited um, to a percentage that makes no sense for anybody. But that's the only availability they have for cash sometimes. Nonetheless, I'll get off the soapbox. Uh, but a firm trained down an additional 2.6% uh, on that. All right, let's jump down the line to some of the other stocks that are moving. We talked about Darden, the numbers that they had there. They beat by five cents on earnings, a buck forty-eight, and revenue top forecasts, same store sales, thirty-four point four percent. Market was looking for thirty-two point six, and they still beat. Uh, but they did announce that the CEO will retire in May of twenty-two. He's going to be replaced by the president and COO, and they fell five percent. Winnebago. They beat as well. So they're trading up. Let's see. WGO, Winnebago. Give back some of the gains, but up about 2%. Now, this stock, uh, chopping around this year, up to 87 earlier in the year. COVID, you really rebounded there as people got on the road and maybe did a little traveling in their Winnebago while the whole world was locked down. Uh, but they beat 351 a share. The market was only looking for 226. All right, let's jump over to FedEx and see how they are opening on their numbers here. FedEx. Woo, up 8.3%. There's an acceleration on their numbers last night. FedEx, look at this thing. Uh, beating estimates on the top and bottom line. They earned 4.83 a share. Mark was looking for 4.28. 
um, with higher shipping rates helping to make up for increased expenses. It's always nice when you can transfer that over, and the market's loving this on the open, man. You're up another six bucks on the open. We take a look at the full pullback here from 319 down to 218. This stock gives up 100 bucks. We put it on a Fibonacci number from the run that we had last May. Okay, and you're talking about right at uh, the 50%. This thing almost pulled back to you now above the 382. Uh, quite a clawback indeed in terms of FedEx up to 260. Man, it doesn't stop. Let's jump over to UPS shares. Trading up 1.8%, UPS getting a lift on their numbers as well as in accelerating on those FedEx numbers up to 215 last night. You're sitting at about 211 right now. Watch out for this market, folks. I thought we were catching a bid for a moment, and I turned away. Let's put it on a one-minute chart to see the action. And, yeah, market lasted about four minutes, folks, before we just sold off 20 points. And just like that, we're dropping like a rock. We're trading at 46.13. You got the NASDAQ 100 off 171. But, boy, that S&P, on a minute basis, you can see things really just picked up at 934. And they're not stopping right now to 4.46.11. Let's jump over to the VIX for some spike in action on the VIX. VIX now above where we were yesterday. You put the VIX on a five minute to see where we were on Wednesday. 23.47 was the high in the VIX on Wednesday's action. We're sitting at 22.84 right now in that volatility index. Boy, it's going to be a spicy day out there, folks. Options expiration uh, on the heels of a Fed meeting where they're going to be hiking faster. It's so interesting here that we got the move on Wednesday. Because I tell you, for the first time uh, coming into that Fed meeting, like I had said, the risk-reward ratio of upside to downside action sitting at basically all-time highs coming into the week seemed like the possibility for a pullback was greater than the market getting some type of news which would accelerate it above all-time highs. Looks like it took a day to recoil, but boy, things are adjusting quickly here. What's so interesting on top of that, though, is that we got the 10-year sitting with a yield of now under 1.39%, folks. You're sitting at 1.387% on that 10-year. Uh, over in Europe, negative action as well. You get the DAX down a full percent, CAC roll down 1.5% over in Europe as they trade lower as well. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back. We got the S&Ps right now down 48 points. NASDAQ 100 off 178. Let's check out the big dogs. You got to check out the biggest stocks out there, folks, because they're going to be carrying these indices one way or the other. Apple down a full percent right now. Microsoft down 1.5 percent, man. Microsoft. Uh, I was surprised by the action we got on Tuesday. When we traded higher on Wednesday, I said, shame on me for thinking tech stocks could trade lower. But boy, folks, talk about trading lower. Microsoft giving up 17 bucks since yesterday, just yesterday. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back in three minutes. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the VIX approaching 23 right now. The market's not stopping right now. And man, after the carnage we had yesterday, uh, who knows if we're going to stop right now, folks. We are down to the lows of Wednesday. You're talking about lows of Tuesday within about 10 points of where we're trading at right now. And any time you have a run like we've had, folks, uh, you're right back to the channel line. That's the only thing I'll bring up here. When you look at a daily basis, back it up even five years to get the full COVID lows in there. You can see this trend line pretty well contained. You know, the highs get a little bit above it. The lows get a little bit below it. But we are bouncing up against the lower portion of that trend line right now. We'll see if it holds. Uh, we could trade a little bit below it, though. You're still talking about a move of 50 points, and you'd be right around uh, where you were to that lower trend line when you bounced back in early December, uh, early this month. Tech stocks pulling back 195. You got the Dow off 428 right now. You got the Dow more than 1,000 points off of its high that it had. We're talking about an S&P right now only. And this is where, folks, you only got the S&P off 130 points from its all-time highs uh, that we just made yesterday. I had to give myself pause yesterday. Oof. That would be some uh, irony, right? If you, if you peek out the day after the fed announces tightening it's that one final push higher and just like that we're now 140 points below that price level yeah even bitcoin giving it up we're down to 46,000 right now in bitcoin you look at this move we've had in bitcoin from the run back in september we've almost given it all back seems like bitcoin's going to 40,000 I mean, look at this. Talk about a little symmetry. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up live next with the Tiger Technicians Hour at 10 o'clock. And man, he's got that cup and handle formation. And that cup, folks, that cup's got to come down to about 41,000 on Bitcoin. Maybe that's your buy. 41,000 on Bitcoin. Quite a pullback from 69,000 back. Is that right? Yeah. 69,000. You're talking about five weeks ago? Yeah, this is a daily. Wow. Let's look up Ethereum. I didn't even realize that these cryptos have traded so much lower. Ethereum, not quite the pullback. Maybe Ethereum, you're looking for a 618, you're looking to get into Ethereum, maybe 3557, you could start to nibble. But boy, I'd be careful because you might get the same type of a pullback on Ethereum down to about 2700 or so. That would be a pullback that you'd get to there. All right, what else we got going on in terms of stocks that are moving? Rivian. So much for uh, all positive action. Uh, they lost $1.23 billion for the third quarter, stemming from expenses to begin production of its electric pickup truck. Rivian's first quarterly report since going public, revenue was $1 million from its first deliveries. Stock's down 8%. This stock's amazing, folks. Uh, 179 this thing ran to. What are we talking about for our market cap right now? Uh, fundamentals on the Thinkorswim platform under the Analyze tab, $85 billion, $85 billion. They go public and they've got no revenue and they're churning $1.23 billion every 90 days. Listen, I get it, all right? This company 
is going to be a force in the future. You've seen what's happened with companies like Tesla. Now, Tesla's back to 921. Tesla's down another half a percent yesterday, man. This stock traded down, talking about 80 bucks almost from high to low. And boy, you want to see something scary, folks. Talk about, I mean, just since the run we had in September, you're almost back to a 618. We traded from 652 to 1243. You doubled the price, and just like that, you've almost given it back for 618. Now that you could have to fill the gap here. I don't know if you filled it. Maybe you have now. We're talking about a high of 910. Not quite. What did we just make it to today? 909. We actually did. We filled that gap that it had from October 22nd. Now that's a daily. Okay. We've now come down and filled that gap. The 618 sitting at about 875. I don't know. Maybe that's an area you could nibble on for Tesla. I don't know, though. Be careful. Everything everything comes with a disclaimer right now in this market when you've had things accelerate like they have. Yes, that's a retracement that we've got from here. But boy, this stock was just trading, folks. It, it's almost mind-blowing to think about. $70 this stock was trading at a year and a half ago. Tesla was trading at 70 bucks. let alone it came into COVID at 186 All right, remember, split-adjusted. If Tesla had never split, we'd be dealing with, uh, I think it went four for one or five for one. So Tesla would be trading at four or $5,000 right now. I know I'm just, you know, free thinking here, but be careful on those ones when the runs that we've had, because they're all based on multiples, Tesla as well. So the market bouncing a bit right from where we were yesterday. You're up uh, a few points from there, negative 47 points on the session right now. You know, it's interesting. Yesterday, Verizon, AT&T, some of the dividend stocks really accelerating higher. Look at this run that Verizon had. Verizon was up like 4% yesterday from 50 to 52.50. Uh, we talked about this on the program, talking about And look at the move that AT&T had as well. Strong, strong moves by both of these equities from 22.60 up to 23.80. Um, there's more than just dividends, but be aware of some of these plays here, folks. And you get the market sitting at all time highs, and you got companies now, you know, you can call that one a dead cat bounce potentially because look at the chart of ATT, especially. Uh, yes, you've got a green bar for the first time in a while on a weekly basis on ATT, but boy, that is still quite a chart to the downside. Verizon, not much prettier recently uh, in terms of a pullback, but there's your decent weekly action. Maybe that gets us back within this channel line here. You take a look at Verizon. This thing's a monthly that I've had. Now, not quite parallel those lines, but it's been pretty well contained going back to basically from 2010, 2005, 2006, the highs versus the lows just got below that trend line. And just like that, we're back in it for Verizon. Um, but both of these companies, I think AT&T yesterday before the run had a 7% yield and Verizon had about a 4.5% yield. When you got the 10-year folks sitting now at under 1.4%, that becomes pretty attractive. And just like that, we're at 1.38%, folks. This is not slowing down right now. Back to a short-term chart of the 10-year note. We're right back up to the highs. We had at about 8 in the morning. We're up 9 ticks right now. We're trading with a yield of 1.38%. Do we make it back to 1.25% in the 10-year? Did not think that was going to happen, folks. You want to keep your spikes up on your back when you see that. Because the note and bond market, man, they're usually the brightest out there because of the amount of money that is in those markets in terms of navigating to where supply and demand actually meet in terms of estimations for growth. And boy, that is uh, quite a decrease for the 10-year coming down to 1.38%. We'll leave it right there. All right, what else we have for stocks that are moving? Uh, Johnson & Johnson, yeah, they're lower. Now, they uh, the CDC recommended that adults receive Pfizer and Moderna vaccines rather than the JNC. J, new data cited higher levels of blood clotting condition than previously thought, although that condition remains rare. Nonetheless, they're advising the mRNA shots, J&J. They're down 2.6% today. Nothing too dramatic when you think about the markets getting pretty pummeled today. But there's your negative action on Johnson & Johnson. You jump over to Moderna. Moderna shares down just three quarters percent. Uh, we jump over to Pfizer shares. Pfizer down 1.6%. You pull up the daily on Pfizer. Quite a run this thing has had, man. You back it up to July. You're trading at 39. You back it up to just in October. You were trading at 41 for Pfizer. I mean, Pfizer... Remember when they were coming out with the Omicron and they were talking about uh, 
anyway, they, they have a horse in the race, folks. And uh, it might be the case. I am boosted. I encourage you to get out there and get boosted. Talk to your medical professional. But these companies are going to benefit from those continued shots simultaneously as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P is negative by 43 points right now. You got a little bit of a bounce, but man, all things considered there. Looking at a five-minute basis since the market has been open. Uh, yes, you got a quite a green bar there, but man, this market, you're talking about, folks, 130 points off of the highs we had just yesterday. Tech stocks catching a little bit of a bid for sure. You trade up to 15,850, so you're talking about 200 points from lows to highs already this morning almost folks we're going to get some seesaw action in both directions it's a great time for our holiday sale for tiger dollars folks we got a two-way market which is a trader's dream we got a holiday tiger dollar sale going on six days left folks get your tiger dollars before this sale ends you can get up to a 40 percent bonus tiger dollars can be used for any newsletter service we offer if you're thinking about signing up if you're already a subscriber folks you purchase tiger dollars we send you the code you apply that code to, f to your account, and just like that, all your future transactions, use those Tiger Dollars, added savings for your subscriptions going forward. Check that out on the front page of TFNN. Amazing. We're talking about six days, December 23rd. Uh, next Thursday, I got a little bit of Christmas shopping to finish up, folks. This weekend, I got to jump on Amazon uh, at some point today, take care of a few things. 
Uh, hopefully you do too. Make sure you get those Christmas presents. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that last few days of the holiday rush proceeds this year with everything else hanging around in flux. All right, and with that in mind, let's jump to that gold contract. See how we're trading gold up ten bucks right now at eighteen oh seven. Crude down a dollar forty eight, still above seventy dollars though right now. We jump to some of the biggest stocks out there. Got to keep your eye on them, folks, because they're going to determine how this market moves. Amazon's down one point two percent. Apple's down. Look at Apple catching a bit, only down a third of a percent. S and P's are down fifty right now, with Apple only down a third of a percent. Microsoft down one point two. Google shares down one point two percent. Tesla shares positive, good old Tesla, positive by a percent right now. And just like that, the S&P, we're going to finish the program right at the lows, folks. S&P is negative by 50. Dow really taking it on the chin. Dow off 1.5%. S&P is off just more than a percent. NASDAQ off six tenths percent. How about that? The NASDAQ, strongest index on the day so far. We'll see if that holds after the NASDAQ. I think NASDAQ traded down 2.6% yesterday. Stay tuned, folks. Going to be an interesting Friday. Options expiration. We got Basil live next coming up. We have, of course, Larry at 11. Live programming all day, folks. Have a great Friday.